Okay, so this is going to be kind of fun. I'm in a very restricted garage workshop here and uh, has no woodworking tools whatsoever other than what I brought with me and a very small table saw that's pretty cheap. And we're building a walnut and maple Barnsley hayrake table. You'll find a link for the basic plan in the description below. And these are the tools that I brought along with me. I have a smoothing plane, a pair of dividers, a cheaper adjustable square, a hammer. I've got a marking knife, flow angle plane. It's my Veritas with plenty of blades. Um, this is a 10 millimeter mortising chisel. And I brought also a spoke shave. I don't know if this is a round one or the flat one. I'm pretty sure it's a flat one. And card scraper. So those are the tools that I brought with me. The rest are all whatever we've got here. Sometimes we're using hand saws that are pretty cheap. Clamps we're struggling with. We only have a couple. So that'll be a challenge to build a huge table. Um, we do have, in addition to this, two pipe clamps. So we might be using some cargo straps and calls and you'll see how this goes. Here's our lovely table saw that um, is, as you can see, it's just a small portable table saw. The fence is not clamping in tight and we have to square it up every time. The blade has a lot of wander to it. It's not gonna give me a really smooth, straight finish. So what I have so far is I've taken eight quarter maple and it was a 10 foot length. I've cut that down into 29 and a half inch um, pieces for the legs. They'll be 29 inches when I'm done. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room to clean things up a little bit and level things off if I need to. I do have the ends marked so that I know which sides, how the board came together. So this is not good enough for a glue joint for me. It's um, even matched up as well as it is with a planer that's gone through at the mill before they brought it out. Um, so we're gonna go over it with a hand plane on the surfaces that I'm gonna to join together first. And that will enable us to get a good glue joint. So I'm used to having a nice workbench to plane my stuff off on. And here I've got nothing. There's no workbench whatsoever. And instead, this is my planing bench nice solid surface. It's heavy enough that it's not going to roll anywhere. I, it's just a piece of plywood that's relatively flat. Got a little bench hook screwed into the end down there. And on the other end, I've got my planing stop. Planing 101. We're just getting two surfaces flat so that we can glue it together. We're making some calls to be able to glue our legs together and Ryan is planing off the ends of a couple of boards and putting a slight uh, bow on one side and that's the side that'll go down to put equal pressure across the leg as we glue it together. We got our board glued together, call on the top and the bottom and our five, count them, five clamps to hold the board together. Um, looks like we got good glue coming out on both sides of our board and we're happy with that. After the glue up, well, you're cleaning up the glue lines with a card scraper. And we should have a pretty good tight surface there. It hardly even shows a seam because we've paired the same cut together like a book matched cut. So I've replaced this flimsy blue push stick with my own table saw push stick. It's got a little bit longer of a base than say a couple inches. As you can see, it'll push, uh, put weight down on my whole board and lock it firmly on the end. So I need a mortise and gauge to be able to do these uh, mortise through mortise and tenons, and I don't have one here, so I'm going to make something really simple. So I've marked out this little block. It's about uh, two and a half inches wide by five inches long, 
Now I'm gonna mark out the center so that I can cut out a little curve that I'll put a beam in. Don't have a drill press, so I'm gonna to have to just go as close as I can to straight in here. Chisel can make pretty quick work of this, even though I don't have a bandsaw. The rest of this I'm going to clean up with a spoke shave. You could do sandpaper, anything else. And this is just rounding off the curve for the beam that goes across to match the inside curve of the mortise here. That's pretty close. The rest of this I think I can clean up using a little bit of sandpaper to get rid of that little air gap that we're seeing. I made a knife for the end out of a piece of old hacksaw blade and just screwed it in place. The beam is held in place with this eye bolt that runs through a nut in this mortise. One. Two, okay. three. So that's the right direction. And that's the right direction. Yeah. Cool grain out. Yep. Yes? Yes. Doing. Take the knife point in the divot. Butt that up against it. Make sure it's square. Here we're cutting the 45 degree angles on the ends of the crossbars. Today we're cutting mortises and on our lovely bench using a clamp to hold the piece and we've, we're trying to keep the chisel square to the sides and since our chisel is not wide enough for our whole mortise we're going to be doing two mortises down the outside to keep those walls straight and then we'll take out the waste in the center. And this will be through mortises, so uh, in a second, I'll show you the back side of the chisel. We flip the chisel over. So on the back side, we've got a piece of tape that tells us when we should stop going for the depth by just a quarter of an inch or so. And we're also not going up to the outside wall of the Mortise. So here we have our preliminary double mortise done through mortise. It's a little bit messy on some of these inside ones, but uh, yeah, we can do better on the next one. The outside is fairly clean. We left a little bit of a line here and out here that we can clean up with a flat chisel. It's kind of tough uh, not having a full width chisel. And we're actually doing twice the work we'd have to if we had a chisel that was as wide as our mortise. So, slow going, but we'll get there. When you chop a through mortise, it's a good idea to start with the inside of the mortise first and finish up on the outside. That way you know you'll have clean lines on your show side. Just need to clean up the corners, make sure it's flat. To do that, we'll take a ruler Basically what I'm looking for is no rocking in the middle of this between the two mortises. And that seems to be actually quite flat there, which is great, great flat wall. This one, see I have a little bit of a gap there, so I've got a little bit of a rough spot here on the side to clean up. We've measured our tenons with the mortise using the show face side because that's what we need it to come through on clearly 
and we're about to cut them off on the table saw. And we're setting up a stop block here so that we do not go farther than our tenon. Looks like with a little bit of wobble, we might be pretty close to where that is. Our height of the blade is set to just under seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've got the tenon marked and that's what we're gonna cut off with the table saw up to the shoulder. We'll make a couple of passes as we go so that uh, we can get rid of some of that material and then we'll just chisel it out. Since I didn't have a tenon saw, I left it short of the cheeks on purpose. Okay, that should get us pretty close to our line and then we can just pare it down with the chisel. Okay, so to flip it over, flip your chisel over. And we want to make sure that that next one does not get cut off too high because it's the shoulder and you want it nice and snug if possible. This is the show side of the through tenon for the stretcher. We'll be adding the wedges in a later part of the process. Don't miss the rest of the series. Subscribe and ring the bell.